Hey crew, and welcome to another episode of Checking In With Your Coach. Last episode, we talked about modifying your current recipes. Today, it's all about back to basics nutrition. All right, so the whole scope of this seminar, and I'll be flashing back and forth. I am trying to purely give you guys advice, right? Purely advice on things that as a trainer I've seen has worked and really just making sure you guys have just a basic understanding of everything you need to know. So give me one moment. Okay, so again, as we go, if you have questions, you can certainly ask those. Let's see, somebody else is trying to come in, cool. You guys can ask any questions that you have as we go and I'll do my best to answer them as it makes sense too. All right, so let's, let's get into this. So first thing we're trying to do, and I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see that a little bit better. Actually, a little, a little less than that. So basic stuff, right? Trying to get everybody on the same page. What we're trying to accomplish is first thing, we want to make sure that you guys have better eating habits. And we'll go into some of those a little bit as we go. Now, the cool thing about being quarantined is some of these goals that we're trying to achieve already are happening right? You're not going to restaurants. You're probably sleeping a lot more. There's a lot of good things happening in this quarantine. So this is the perfect time if you guys are wanting to start new habits, okay? So one moment. Again, first thing, we want to make sure you guys are eating better. Second thing, cooking for yourself. We'll talk about this more in, in the future, but I, I want you guys cooking some of your meals. It doesn't have to cook all of them. You can still get carry out, take out, things like that. But the more often you cook your own meal, the more likely you are to know what's in it. You can limit certain sugars or certain things that you're trying to take out of your diet. Um, while at the same time, you can kind of figure out how much of that food you're eating. Because a lot of times if you go to a restaurant and they give you a really large portion, a lot of people have the tendency to try to finish that whole portion rather than saving some for later. But again, other goals we're trying to do, we're trying to limit or completely eliminate processed foods, such as things containing white flour, sugar, white sugar, added sugar, whatever you want to say. Um, we certainly want to limit our alcohol consumption. So I'm not saying you have to eliminate it, but you know, if you're drinking every day, so let's say seven days a week, if we can limit that to maybe four days a week, that's already going to help you start to see those goals. Again, we want to improve how you're sleeping. Um, and again, what's cool about the quarantine is a lot of you have the opportunity to maybe catch a nap or go to bed a little early, wake up a little later, trying to make sure you guys get a little bit more water in. Um, and we'll talk more about this eating five or less ingredients in a moment. And I want you guys to start to develop a taste for healthy food. So again, this is what we're trying to accomplish with this seminar. It's just giving you a little bit of information to do some of these things. Okay. The number one thing people forget is what all of our foods are doing for us. Okay. So the number one thing I want you to understand is what do carbs, fruits, and vegetables do for us? What, what does protein do for us? What do fats do for us? So that when you guys are eating and selecting things, you can kind of make better, better choices. So today I'm not going to be saying, okay, you know, Person A, you need exactly this many carbs, this many fats, this many proteins. Maybe that's something we can do in the future and teach you how to kind of calculate that yourself. Or maybe that's a session that we set up and we figure that out. But again, I'm just trying to make sure you guys understand what these things are doing for you. So when we're talking carbohydrates, that's any grain, pasta, you know, breads, fruits, vegetables. These are all car uh, containing carbohydrates. Some like breads contain a lot more carbohydrates than let's say broccoli, a vegetable, right? And then fruits are somewhere in between. So I'm not, you know, necessarily going to break off into talking about, you know, what's good for you, what's bad for you too much, um, minus trying to limit the added sugars and the, the white bread. So again, carbs for most people, um, especially when we are just starting the process of nutrition, some of you are further than than this, but for the most part, people generally get their energy, their fuel from their carbohydrates. So your workout fuel, you know, what helps you get through the day, that's typically going to be your carbohydrates. So we do need to make sure we have some carbohydrates coming in. Okay. If we go completely without, 
yes, our body can take some energy from body fat, but it's not as efficient as it would be if you were actually feeding yourself. And we'll talk about this more in a little bit, but carbohydrates are our main body's fuel source. Now you can see ahead on number three, any unused fuel will go into body fat. So if you're overindulging, you know, you eat a box of pasta at every single meal, chances are you're going to be taking that fuel and packing it on as body fat, which remember your body fat is just stored energy for later for the times that you're not getting 100% the energy you need. And then the second thing on this list is, especially when we're talking fruits and vegetables, you get your vitamins, you get your nourishment, you get your some minerals from your carbohydrates. So again, there are plenty of diets out there that are quote unquote low carb. And for some people that does work, but again, for the vast majority, this is kind of how we want to think about it. We do need some carbs coming in. Protein, okay? Most of you know protein is what helps build your muscles, but it also can help deal with your joints. If you're having joint pain, protein can help you with this. Um, it's great for your nerves, your skin, your hair, your nails. It does more than just what we need in our workout. And typically, where people fall short when it comes to nutrition is that protein, okay? So the easiest thing you can do for yourself is to add more protein into your life. And then fats, unfortunately, a lot of you grew up during a time where it was all about low fat and that didn't do you any service, okay? Because that's taking out one whole element of how we fuel ourselves. Um, fats do help us recover. Fats can kind of give us that tranquilizing effect where it helps us kind of go to bed, fall asleep, make us slow down a little bit. Where So carbohydrates give you more of a quicker energy, which is why if you have something that's very sugary, you get a spike in energy and then you crash because it's very quickly digested where fats are a little bit slower. So it's, it's nice to kind of give you that long-term energy. Um, and then the number two thing on this list is without fat, we can't be alive. So if we're not taking in dietary fats, there are so many things in our body that just do not happen, including you trying to lose weight, that just do not happen if we don't have enough fats coming in. Now, the bulk of our time, the bulk of this discussion today is going to be over these helpful tips, okay? So before, you know, that's just kind of laying the groundwork. Here are things that you guys can do right now to make big changes in your lives. The number one thing that helps about 50% of people is actually tracking the food that you eat. So if you don't have a notebook, if you haven't, you know, written down, you know, I ate, you know, this for lunch, this for breakfast, this for dinner, it's hard to know how much food is coming in to know how much food you need to maybe eliminate, maybe you need to add to your life. Um, there's a few athletes I've been working with that they didn't realize how little amount of protein they were getting in. And by little, I'm talking like a chicken breast or a protein shake in an entire day. And especially if you guys are working out, that's just, that's just not enough. Now, three different types of people. We have the people who are trying to lose weight. We have the people who are trying to gain weight. And we have the people who are trying to just maintain their weight. Now, for all of you, you all need to be taking in a certain amount of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. But I don't know how much food you need to eat if we don't have some type of a record, okay? Because I'm not some magician that can look at you and say, you need exactly, you know, 1,790 calories. And there are some tests that you can do that can help get you closer to that number, but no test is perfect, okay? So at least initially tracking some of your food is going to be very beneficial because the, what's, what's nice is, Let's say every day you eat frozen pizza, you drink alcohol, you're eating ice cream, all of these things, and we have this written down and it's for seven days. All we have to do is go in and adjust one of those days and we can already see some results. Okay, So by no means do am I giving you a plan today that's going to say you have to take your life from where it is now and move it to this grand, perfect, whatever. It's what one thing can we take from this talk today? Okay. So if you're trying to lose weight, yes, you're going to have to go on a scale every once in a while, maybe once a week, maybe twice a month. We have to track if your goal is in fact to lose weight, we have to track your food and actually track your weight. So let's say you go two weeks and you haven't budged the scale at all. We can look back at your nutrition and see, oh, four times last week you had alcohol and ice cream. Well, what happens if we 
adjust it to only having ice cream twice or alcohol twice. That may budge the scale. But you know, I'm not saying you can't have that frozen pizza or you know whatever your your plan looked like in the previous two weeks. If your goal is to gain weight, for some of you this is kind of easy because you can just keep stuffing it in. But most times, if you're trying to gain weight, let's say gaining muscle or gaining strength, you're you're not going to want to just stuff down calories as, as much as you can because you will put on body fat. And in all three of these cases, lose, gain, and maintain, you're, you're most likely trying to still be lean. Now, for those of you that are within about five to 10 pounds of your goal weight, I want you to be thinking in terms of maintain, where how do I keep my weight the same while still seeing the changes physically that I'm looking for? So let's say you want a little bit more muscle, a little bit more, a little bit less body fat. How do we keep your weight the same and make these adjustments? In some cases, it can be in your workout, but in most cases, it's pushing off maybe having a beer or pushing off um, going a little bit crazy or going out for on a bender. Other help, helpful tips. So in the past, it said, I want you to try to look at foods if you're looking at a nutrition label and look at the ingredients and I want it to be five or less ingredients. One of those ingredients we want to make sure we avoid is anything ending in os. So dextrose, glucose, even though those two are primary energy sources for our body, um, things like sucralose or maltodextrin or anything that ends in os is, is a sugar of some sort, okay? Now, yes, there are some sugars that are good for you, such as fructose to a point, and some dextrose is good for you. But if it's, let's say you buy a package of something and you see OSE is one of the five ingredients, it's going to be you know, full of sugar and it's something you're, you're wanting to limit as much as you can. Um, some of your meals, because especially as you're cooking for yourself, and I'll, my wife's not here, so I can say this. Some meals suck. Okay, some meals do not taste good. Um, some meals you are just going to have to treat as food. So let's say you planned you were going to do a, a slow cooker meal with pork and sauerkraut with asparagus on the side and some sweet potatoes, and it tastes kind of bland. That is okay. Okay, sometimes, I mean, yes, you can season it. Yes, you can add salt, and I'm fine with that. But sometimes when you make a meal, it is going to be just okay. Not everything needs to be amazing. And I, I really want you to think in terms of, is it, am I just fine eating this? Yeah, sure, okay. I can hold off a, a meal that tastes really good until Friday or something like that. Another thing that can be helpful is coming up with five meals that you have the food for most of the time in your refrigerator. So for us, we do things like rice spaghetti, or maybe we'll have zucchini noodles in the fridge or something like that, where we don't necessarily have a plan or we're rushed from the day. Maybe we got off work late. Maybe we went to the gym and stayed longer, whatever. We have, my wife and I have five meals that we typically have available at any time where it's like, okay, it's only going to take us 15 minutes. Let's get this. Let's make this happen. Um, that way we are eating and not having to go to a Domino's or not having to go to a, um, a restaurant just to pick something up because we have those five meals available. And always have a plan for the days that you don't have a plan. So what I mean by that is if your work involves travel, kind of have it figured out where, okay, so I know I'm going to have to eat on the go rather than stopping at a Burger King drive through Maybe I can go to a gas station and get their Greek yogurt, a protein shake, and some almonds. And maybe there's a fruit there. Or you know, you have something packed. Or it, there's just... So my wife, she always has, just in case I get a sweet tooth, we have these, they're called Kodiak cakes. They come in these little cardboard containers you just add water to and throw it in the microwave and you can get you know flapjacks brownies whatever you want the cool thing about it is they are lower in sugar than other brownies and things like that but they're also higher in protein so that's just kind of our our way of if we don't have a plan and then something to remember is always having vegetables in the day now let's say it's easter okay because we're going to do a social distancing Easter this weekend, but I know going into it, one of my meals is going to be absolute garbage. It's going to be 
full of candies and sweets and cakes and brownies and, and whatever other garbage I stuff down my gullet. But I make it a high priority to make sure that I get some vegetables in that day. Okay, so maybe, maybe our Easter is going to be around lunchtime. So my plan for the dinner time is to try to make up for any protein that is lost and the vegetables that, is, that are lost because most likely we won't be having too many vegetables with our lunch. So we're thinking a stir fry. Now, my wife for breakfast, she's thinking, okay, what foods can I eat that are going to help limit my cravings and my sweet tooth when I go to this Easter because I know there's going to be junk everywhere. Now, rather than saying she can't have that junk, by her having a really good oatmeal breakfast or you know whatever it is, maybe it's eggs and some sausage links with, you know, a grapefruit or something. She'll go into Easter being a little bit more fed, a little bit more satisfied, less likely to binge, right? Then once the binging or whatever is done, maybe she has a couple glasses of wine, whatever, we make up for what whatever we lost the day before. Okay? So and or not the day before, but the meal before. So veggies and protein are always needing to be high on your list. Now, when you get a craving, whether it's a uh, craving for something sweet, salty, crunchy, whatever, it can come from three different things. So I really want you to be aware of this. It can come from the fact that every night at seven o'clock, you you make yourself a bowl of ice cream or you always give yourself popcorn or there's something like that, a habit that you always do. So if we can push off that habit, break that habit, or just be aware of that habit, that can help you kind of get out of that zone. It can also come from addiction. So, you know, certain things like white flowers for people, some sugar can be very addictive. Um, And on top of it, you can have a habit for that. And those get somewhat tough to break, but sometimes being aware that, wow, I, me personally, I love candy. I love like sugary, sweet type things. And I make sure that what helps me is I tell myself, okay, on this particular day, so for me it's Easter, I'm going to allot myself this candy, but then I'm going to make sure that at least until Thursday, I'm not going to have any of that candy. And for me, that works. For some people, that doesn't. For some people, they need to just keep it out of their house. Um, But most people know if they have an addiction towards salts or chips or you know sugar or whatever. And then a big one that people forget is that it could come from a lack of nourishment. So So my wife, Courtney, she craves like peanuts and nuts and salt. That's fine. But if she tries to curb that craving because maybe she gets a craving for Reese's peanut butter cups, what she's missing is the fats. Maybe she's missing a little bit of protein. Maybe she's missing some salt. Maybe she's missing just general calories. And her body tells her, hey, have a Reese's peanut butter cup because we can get all of those things that we're looking for from this one object, this you know Reese's peanut butter cup. So if you find yourself constantly craving chips, is it because you're missing salt? Maybe you're missing carbohydrates for the day. What's going on that your body's actually craving this one thing? Um, and then just cr- quickly, I am a proponent of vitamins. A lot of times people can curb cravings and have a better diet if they are taking a multivitamin. I'm not here to recommend a specific one, but I, I do believe in that. If you're not getting enough protein from your actual food, yes, I totally believe a supplement can help you. If on the go, you're like, okay, I don't want to stop anywhere. I'm going to have a protein bar and that helps you gain your weight, lose your weight or maintain your weight. And that works for you. I'm totally fine with that. Okay. Again, this is not, this whole thing is not about exactly what you need to be doing. This is just giving you rough guidelines, just trying to get some get the ball rolling. And for some of you, maybe in the last three weeks, you guys have just been binging hard. You guys have been in quarantine. Maybe there's some anxiety there and you're really trying to, you know, you're putting in, putting on weight and you're trying to avoid that. Again, this is just to try to kind of restart you. Now, this next thing is just more of a visual cue. Um, It's not to specifically say, you know, you have to have this, you have to have that. It's just more to give you visual. So what should my plate look like? So as we go, I'll I'll try to remind you of this, but we've got green for vegetables, blue for protein, this salmon color for fats, and then for other carbs, it's kind of a a tan. If you're the type of person that doesn't go to the gym, right, or goes very seldomly, maybe now that you're in quarantine, you're only working out once or twice a week, I recommend you eat just three meals a day, okay? 
some people, you know what, you can take this one step further and you can snack throughout the day. But often, if you have three you know, meals very strategically put throughout the day, maybe it's 8 a.m., 1 p.m., and 6 p.m., it can help you kind of get through some things. Now, if you're a sedentary type person, you can see you don't get a whole lot of carbohydrates in your day. Maybe you have a bowl of oatmeal for breakfast. Maybe you have a little bit of sweet potato for lunch and maybe some sweet potato or something, rice, whatever, a little bit for dinner. Because again, you're not expending a lot of energy. So we don't need to take in a ton of energy. So if you find yourself, you don't, you haven't been working out much, what we want to make sure as a priority is you're getting a lot of vegetables, you're getting a lot of protein. So for breakfast, you might have eggs, you might have oatmeal, maybe a serving or two of oatmeal, two to four eggs. Cool. For lunch, maybe you're doing a salad or you know, now that you're home, maybe you're doing, I don't even know, broccoli or a, some type of a stir fry with a little bit of rice and, and a good amount of protein. And then for dinner, something similar. Now, if you notice the lunch and the supper visuals are exactly the same because Especially if you're in a sedentary type life where you don't have the time to go to the gym or you're just not making time for it, what can be very helpful is whatever you have for dinner the night before, having it as leftovers for lunch. That's usually going to be a pretty good way to go about it. Um, and then for you, you guys can have about two fruits. Now, if you guys do get into the habit of late night snacking, you guys can have a, some mixed nuts, maybe a little bit of Cool Whip, some carrots you know, celeries, things like that, where it's kind of just a filler. You, the, you know, if you're not working out, if you're a sedentary type person that doesn't move a whole lot, you know, you're not very, you're not allotted ice cream for, for a late night snack due to the fact that if your goal is to lose weight or maintain your weight, having a bunch of ice cream every night isn't going to be beneficial. Now, a lot of you fall into the category of this, I work out two to three times a week. Okay. So you guys are going to eat somewhat similarly to those sedentary type people. But as you can see for our breakfast and throughout the whole day, we want more protein coming in. Because again, if you're working out two to three times a week, we want a little bit more protein than if you were just sitting around. You can still have your same oatmeals, your you know, certain low sugar cereals, things like that. Your lunch, we still want to get a good amount of vegetables in, whether it's even just carrots or celery or something like that, sweet potato, rice, whatever, plus protein. And then What's different for your guys is, is something that comes right after your workout. So now I have this happening after lunch because I know quite a few of you work out in the evenings, but this can certainly happen in between breakfast and lunch as well. Once you finish a workout, we're wanting some type of a meal that's going to have protein and carbohydrates in it. Some people that's a protein shake and maybe a fruit, maybe that's protein shake and you know a, a granola bar, oat, I mean uh, granola just granola in general. Maybe it's granola plus Greek yogurt. Something like that needs to come after your workout because again, if you're working two to three times a week, you need a few more extra calories. And then supper time, we're talking higher vegetables, lower carbohydrates, and we're talking protein. You guys too can have fruit. Just checking the chat. No questions yet. And again, if you guys have questions, please throw it in the chat. You can stop me at any time and I'll, I'll certainly talk about that. Now, if you're the type that goes to the gym even more frequently than two to three times a week, so some of you diehards or someone like me, this is what my day is going to kind of look like. For breakfast, I'm going to have quite a bit of protein. I'm going to have some carbohydrates to make sure that my day is going to go. Then, you know, I have my set lunch where there's vegetables, proteins, fat, uh, carbs rather, and then my supper is going to be higher vegetables, proteins, carbs, just like we've talked about. Now, because I'm more active, I need more food. Okay, so I have my same post-workout meal where it's carbs and proteins. If I'm going, you know, if I work out in the morning, I'll have it after my wor morning workout. If I have it in the evening, I'll have it before my supper. But I also have this fifth meal. It's a snack. Now, this snack can be a protein shake. This snack can be, you know, whatever it needs to be so that you can get it in. But again, if you're working out more frequently, you do need a little bit more food. So I put the fats in here. I put the fats in here to signify you guys can have nuts with granola and maybe Greek yogurt, whatever you need to do to make this extra meal happen. Okay, so again, you guys can still have your two fruits and then late night snacks can be a little bit more peanut butter based. It can be a little bit, instead of just Cool Whip, maybe you can get away with some um, ice cream. Now I'm just, 
I'm not going over these lists of foods, but what I really want you to see is what can I eat every day? There is a lot of food that you can eat every single day from eggs to tuna to chicken breast to ground beef for your proteins, your fats. You can have quite a few oils. You can have some cheese every day if you want. There's quite a few fruits that you can have every day from oranges to cherries to plums. There's, there's a lot of foods you can have every single day. Okay, Yams, your quinoa, your oatmeal, 100% whole wheat products, sweet potatoes. And if you guys want this list, I can certainly send it to you. Just message me after this seminar and I'll certainly get that to you. You can have your coffee every day. But what I wanted to get, a, a get after are all of these condiments. You can do a lot of condiments, but if you notice, a lot of them are low sugar or no sugar added or maybe they're sp spicy, so like a hot sauce or a Tabasco sauce or something like that. You can have jellies, but they should be more on the low sugar food, low sugar type. You can make your foods taste really good, but I just want you guys to be conscious of what it is that you're having. What's the, uh, okay, the grass-fed butter thing. So I just saw a question about grass-fed butter. That's a little bit more advanced, but I personally like grass-fed butter because I eat corn-fed steak, okay? So just that's as far as I'll go in the seminar. If you want more of an expansion on that, just ask me after. Now, on some of your splurge days, this is when you can have like a fattier steak or salmon and, you know, this can happen multiple times a week. You can have things like regular chocolate milk or Fairlife chocolate milk, or you can have your peanut butters and your, your actual honey, and you can have things like pineapple and, and cranberries and kiwi and bananas. You can have a banana a couple times a week. Um, you can have things like granola and things that are going to be a little bit more higher in sugar. You can have those seldomly throughout the week, just not necessarily every day. Now, which foods do I want to limit or completely eliminate and try to avoid as much as possible and only have every once in a while? Things like soda, cookies, pizza, ice cream, anything with canola oil in it, your flavored popcorns, um, fruit juice, orange juice, smoothies, alcohols, restaurant foods. Those are types of things that we're trying to limit as much as possible. So we've got a, a, a few moments left. I know I threw a lot at you, but now is the time to ask me all the questions that you have that have come up in the scope of what I've talked about. And I can certainly expand on some things. And again, if you guys want this whole, like a PDF of this seminar, I can certainly send that to you guys. If you guys have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel.